if your kids are not tough and you want them to be tough, I have some tips for you. Number one, think about baby stepping them. Don't drive them. So, you know, if your son or daughter in the sport of wrestling is new and maybe they're getting overwhelmed by someone who's wrestled year round for five years, maybe they don't have to wrestle that athlete every day. So just like a boxer will nurture, a boxing manager will nurture along the confidence of his fighter before it's time for the, the, you know, the big title fight, we wanna be a little bit smart, okay? Now obviously we don't want to avoid the best kids, but we don't have to wrestle three hammers every practice and then get mad at our son or daughter because you know, they can't emotionally handle it. So they need to get kids that they can beat and have some success. Go to some tournaments. I have parents who are like, well, you know what? He can do the beginner's tournaments because, you know, he's a first-year wrestler. But we want him to be better and push himself, and he agrees. Of course he agrees because you're, parent, you're the parent. He's always going to agree with you. No, have him enter beginner's tournaments. He's a beginner. Get some confidence. Maybe if there's a weekend where there's not a beginner's tournament, maybe then that weekend you can enter him or her into an event that's a little bit more competitive. So just a little bit of common sense and baby stepping them along, right? Allow them to be a human. They're going to get upset if they're getting beat up at practice for 40 minutes straight by three different partners. So, you know, no unrealistic expectations. Secondly, so you do wrestle the, the little stud at practice. You're going to talk to them outside of the wrestling room, maybe on the way to practice, and you're going to say something like, hey, when you wrestle Jonathan next week, we know you can't beat him yet, and that's okay. I go to the gym three days a week, and I can't bench press 200 pounds, but that's okay. I'm going to do a little bit more than I did last time, and I'm going to be happy with that. So what can you do a little bit more of next time that we can be proud of? Uh, maybe can you, can you maybe try not to get turned when you're on bottom? How about if you get put on your back, you go crazy, and you fight, and you don't get pinned? Maybe those two things would be a good start. And maybe they do get turned, and they also get pinned. But they didn't get turned and pinned a lot. You have to look. You have to be very creative sometimes. Find something that you can lock onto to compliment them on. We all love to be complimented. Some of us need it more than others. Some of us can't function without without it. And you know, a young struggling athlete wants nothing more than a pat on the back from their parent or their coach. Okay. So coaches, you're probably watching this too, some of you. So look for opportunities to pat the young man on the back. We had a kid last weekend, just a lot of it. Peyton, he cannot beat Ty. And, you know, but we were discussing the importance of being on the mat with a better, more physical wrestler because there's a physicality gap here that we can't do anything about right now. And I was like, Peyton, I want you to lose better. I don't care if you beat him. I don't think you're going to beat him. It might be six months until you beat him. Let's just try. Let's just try to lose a good. Let's just try to lose well. And if you get turned once, don't sort of get discouraged and crumble and get turned five more times. I, we don't. We cannot do that. Get turned once and only once. And he did better. And we we talked about him to the entire class at the end of practice and just quickly made a note, use it as a teaching moment for the rest of the kids and the, the parents. I'm always actually talking to the parents a lot of times. If I can get them on track, we can we can do something here, right? So that's an example, right? So let's be a little bit creative about finding how we can lose in such a way that we, it's like climbing a flight of stairs. You know, it's maybe a thousand flights of stairs and we're only on the 10th set of stairs. Can we get to 11 or 12 by the end of the week? We're not worried about getting to the top of the stairs yet. So a lot of it's emotional and, and mental and, you know, it's, 
it's physical toughness, but it's also emotional toughness, and it's also something that we can do. We can do it. We can we can we cannot get turned eight times. We can only get turned once or twice. We can do that. And so now they have an objective that is completely obtainable, but they need to feel that pat on the back and that acknowledgement. Then you're like, make a big deal out of it. The next practice, we're gonna go again. The next practice, what if they don't do great and they get turned 18 times? Let it slide. Let it slide. Bite your tongue. Be quiet. Be the 40-year-old. Then, before the next practice, say, hey, now there's a good chance you're gonna wrestle Jonathan again. I do think he probably turned you a little bit more last time. I really wasn't watching. I was just trying to let you do your thing. But I did see it once or twice he turned you. So remember, let's double down on our goal here. Right? In one third of a mile, turn left. We don't want to fall apart or we don't want our kids to fall apart. Route guidance is now finished. We don't want our kids to fall apart and start back from square one because we couldn't keep it together. Okay? And the last thing I would do is point out where other people are displaying a little bit of mental toughness. Maybe you're watching college wrestling on the internet or on TV. And point it out and say, look at that man. He didn't go. I mean, I almost think I would have went. His arm was twisted and he was fighting. And look at his face. Look at his face. Pause it. That's a face of a warrior right there. That's what it's about. Because remember, not getting scored on is just as important as scoring points. If you don't believe me, then I want you to go out there and score five points today, and then I want you to give up 50. And let me see if the ref raises your hand. I want to see, I want to see you give up six and see if the ref raises your hand. He won't because you lost by one point. So not getting scored on is vitally important, right? It's kind of like money. How much, not how much money you make, it's how much you keep, right? Same way, it's not how many points you score, it's how much you keep, how much, how many, how many, how, what kind of an advantage do you keep? So, yes, we're trying to score, yes, we're being aggressive, but we're also got to be very, very mentally tough and drawing a line in the sand and, and a commitment that says, I'm not going to go, you know, and tactical, technical, it's not all mental toughness, it's not tactical, technical wrestling dictates this if you get to my legs and I don't want you to take me down what can I do technically from there grab the coach say his opponent got to his legs three times and took him down easy and he ended up on his butt all three times how can you wrestle from there well let's not get put on our butt let's see here oh you're supposed to sprawl in a circle feet wide chest eyes knees off the mat push and slide the four steps to hit pressure defense right if you're a member of our online academy you know that drill it 50 times it's changed your whole life maybe a coach says uh, now if you do get put to your butt here's a way we can stalemate that because remember sometimes we're just going to try to get a stalemate we don't have to always wrestle sometimes we just lock down and technically it's stalling right we're just locking down and keeping him or her from scoring and the ref calls what stalemate okay so you're learning about stalemates now we're learning some technical things that keeps us from getting put on our butt but if you get put on your butt with a leg attack we know how to hit pice from there and to stalemate that wow you got three tricks now now there's some it's not all toughness there's some technical and tactical things and that's one reason that maybe some kids there's less mental toughness required when you're technical. I don't have to tough it out all the time, right? I don't always have to tough it out if I have the tools. If you want to dig a backyard swimming pool, you don't use a shovel or a spoon, right? You get an excavator out there and you do it with a tool. It's not always about hard work and effort and toughness. Some of you, your kids are mentally tough it's just they're just getting the crap beat out of them because they don't have the skills so you need to master the best two to three ways to score from the common positions of wrestling there's a predictability to a wrestling match just like there's a predictability to a baseball game football game soccer tennis there's predictability all right 
You have to have a good backhand. You have to have a good serve. You have to have a good serve return, right? Because tennis is tennis. Wrestling is wrestling. So you start to look for the predictability of a wrestling match, mostly the common positions, and we start to master the sport of wrestling from there, not by learning everything, but by mastering the best two to three ways to score and or defend from there. And then pretty soon you start to say, hmm, I'm going to get four front headlocks a match, Nick said. I'm going to get three single legs a match with my opponent sprawls on my back. The bottom guy's going to stand up two to four times a match, and I have two good mat returns from there. I can get to my feet two to four times a match, hopefully. I need to know how to break the lock. We have two things from there. My opponent's going to grab my head with a collar tie on average five to eight times a match. Let's say six times a match. I get 50 matches this year. 300 times this year, someone's going to grab my head. Right? On phase two of our online academy, there's five ways to score from there. On the basics phase and phase one, we have two and three key things to do from a collar tie. You're going to get 300 chances to score from there. Why not get good from these common positions and use the predictability of a match to master a few techniques and we can take the chaos and uncertainty out of wrestling and there's less mental toughness required because we're skilled and dangerous and technical. So that's also a part of this too. But thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps. I would like to see you guys share this with somebody. Follow us. Uh, we have our summer camp dates for release. It's 2023. We did have over uh, two years ago, we turned away over 600. Last year, we had 193 on the waiting list, and we turned the list off. Uh, some of our camps sold out by February. That's no exaggeration. You know, we have 1,400 kids at camp. So, I mean, they we're not talking about, you know, it goes for two and a half months, though. So, our camps usually have right around 70 wrestlers. We have 210 wrestlers on campus. There's three camps going simultaneously, rotating through our three gyms, our two two mat spaces that we use. So there's only about right around 70 kids, 35 groups of kids on the mat at one time. So they're a very small group, but there are 200 kids a week for 70 days straight. And we sold all those spots out mostly by February. So if you want to train with us, do that. Online Academy uh, will blow your mind. That's all you need as far as training at home. Get a home wrestling mat. Skip some of these stupid tournaments and take that $500 and go get a 12 by 12 get a 10 by 10 it's i would not do that we'd get a 12 by 12 get our online academy and hit 30 reps of everything on the basics phase go back and hit 10 more reps of everything then do phase two one hit 30 reps of everything come back and hit 10 reps then go basics again hit 20 reps of everything on basics 20 reps of everything on phase one you'll be a monster people will be saying what happened to your kid then you dive into phase two and phase three um, and take take the same approach then it's just going back and redrilling everything hit five reps of basics through through phase three then you do five reps again all right it might take you two or three weeks practicing twice a week for an hour but that's okay you don't have to practice tying your shoe. You already know that. And once you learn a wrestling technique, we don't have to practice that 900 times a week for the next 14 years. Hit five or 10. Good, got it. Very nice. Underhook throw by. Yeah, nice. Down block, go behind. Wrist trap. Good. Hit five of those. Good. Oh, your wrist trap didn't look good. Let's hit 10 more. Oh, we're not doing this. Where do we should be doing that? Okay, that's right. I, I keep making that mistake. Okay, hit 10 more. Perfect. That's covered. Next week, you're going to hit five. Ooh, that looks great. Move on. And you just keep touching through the, the practice plan. And there's 272 wrestling techniques there. Uh, not all of them do you have to drill every day. Some of them are tricks. You know, where to, where to point your hand on a half Nelson? It's here. Once you do that, you don't have to drill that. You can scratch it off the list. It's a trick. So don't let that number 272 confuse you. I believe it's 272 wrestling techniques we have. Don't let that scare you. It, it, it dwindles down very quick because some of these are tricks and tactics and adjustments. They're not really a, a core technique or they're important, but they're not anything that takes, you know, we're not doing a side flip on a balance beam, okay? It's just a trick. So some of those are tricks which are vitally important. Um, but yeah, competition camps would be great. Private team camps, we have teams making over 20 grand a year. Uh, they book our private team camps. We have a flat fee, you keep the rest, we help you market and advertise. It comes down to right around $1,500 a day to have us out, the, out at your gym for a camp. Based on 40 kids, $40 a day, which is basically giving it all away. But you're gonna charge about $65 a day. You're gonna have 60 to 80 kids. Some people have like 130 kids. I got people making so much money. 
to make a hell of a lot more than I do, and I'm glad about that. So we have a flat B. We did um, 67 of those, I believe, last summer, and right around 64 the year before. We just barely broke 60, I remember. But those go year round. We also do two and a half day, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday competition or private team camps. So, you know, we got it all girls camps, online coaching. We pretty much do it all private lessons. So whether you live in Alaska or you're five minutes down the road here in Missouri where we're stationed, there's training programs for you. Um, and, you know, summer camp, competition camps, online academies for most people. And for people close to us, you can throw in weekly academy and private lessons as in addition to those other things as well. Um, but either way, we'd love to have you share this with somebody that can use it. Subscribe. And uh, if you want to get our newsletter, we, we share a lot of important updates and tips and also training opportunities, right? Uh, some people are like, I don't want anybody trying to sell me something. Hey, I'm just letting you know of an opportunity. We have a camp, there's 200 kids coming from 29 different states. It's a weekend camp. Your other alternative is go, you know, some people, they'll go to the same local tournament and they're all mad because they spent $100 in, you know, 18 hours in the bleachers and their son got two matches and wrestled four minutes and that's the same two kids they always wrestle. And they're like, this sucks. And I'm like, you should have came to competition camp. Oh, I didn't want you emailing me and trying to sell me something. Dude, I don't care if you come or not. I would like for you to, but if you have better things to do, I understand. But if you can hit three or four of those a year, change your whole career, right? So these are our opportunities. And if you were interested in some opportunities, all you gotta do is what? Nick at PerlerWrestling.com or info. Info at PerlerWrestling.com. Um, and just ask, be put on the email list and we will put you on our newsletter, our email list, and we'll send you updates and training opportunities for you. And that would be fantastic. Good luck.